uh, has overcome impossible odds, launching a game with zero budget in a temporarily converted public bomb shelter in Tel Aviv using software and marketing tips they learned from YouTube tutorials. Exciting to talk to you guys today. Hey, guys. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, really enjoyed uh, the experience. I, uh, I got to admit, we, we both did it today, actually, so that uh, we would have it fresh on our fresh. minds. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and it was really, really fun. I really, uh, really enjoyed it. It was, um, you know, being taken with into the story. Uh, and um, what I really liked is that you can also interact other than just animations, right? So I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, so it was really fun. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for creating the experience. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for experiencing. Yeah, it really makes our day when when people just uh, like what we're doing. Yeah, I can imagine. It's a lot of hard work uh, uh, <laughs> being yeah, put into it. Like when 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 playing it, it feels like like there's a huge company behind this. You know, like a massive. There must be so many people working on this. Uh, but uh, read, reading online. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a really, guys, really uh, small team. <laughs> that, that's the truth. Yeah, t tell us about it. I'm curious to uh, to learn. I saw underground basement. I saw a lot of things yeah, that I was like, wow. That, that was the that was the thing. I was uh, looking at it uh, afterwards, like the end credits. You guys have something like, but this was literally underground, and I was like. What, what what do you mean? Like literally underground. And then I was searching for it and found that article. Uh, it's like the VR Scout uh, one. And it says like, uh, Peanut Button uh, has overcome impossible odds, launching a game with zero budget in a temporarily converted public bomb shelter in Tel Aviv using software and marketing tips they learned from YouTube tutorials. That sort of is like, what? <laughs> That's it's amazing. All you know? It's all true. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, so, which, so what's the story which behind you it? want us to elaborate on because because I think the the article there puts it uh, re nicely, I guess. Um, yeah, the the bunker part of things is um, in Israel they they built um, these underground bomb shelters around town during the fifties and so on, um, and when when they're not used um, to, to, to shelter the neighborhood, basically, then the municipality give them out as a studio to artists around town, and it's like in a subsidized uh, price. So basically very, very cheap to rent. Oh, interesting. So we wrote in yeah. and we said, hey, we're a digital artists. Yeah. And uh, somehow we, we managed to, to get it, and we still work there. Yeah, we're oh, still wow. there. Um, I mean, not at the moment. Now we're at Eyal's apartment. Yeah. Um, but that, <laughs> yeah. that's still yeah, a workspace. Cool. It's, it's really cool because it's, it's spacious and it really has this underground uh, kind of cyberpunk feeling, like post-apocalyptic. You know, you're in a shelter when everybody's wearing a VR headset. It's pretty surreal. <laughs> um, yeah, and it almost feels like as if three of you went inside and said to each other, like, we're not getting out until this is done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, COVID just hit as we were working on it. Um, and so we, we, we said, okay, we don't have anywhere to go anyway, so we might as well just stay and work the whole, <laughs> the whole pandemic time. Yeah. Oh, wow. mm, so, so was it also created d during the pandemic time? In the entire... Uh, it was the... Yeah. We, started, we started a bit before, so... Mm -hmm. um, uh, really, really early conception uh, was uh, 2019, okay. summer 2019. And then pre-production, as we were finishing it and going into production, that was the first lockdown. Uh, oh, wow. So mm. around uh, January 2020. Uh, I think the, the pandemic really impacted the game. Oh, the yeah. pessimistic uh, point of view, post-apocalyptic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's very much from uh, working uh, in the times of uh, lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it How was also that... something to you know something to hold on to because like everything was so depressing and yeah. uncertain um, that it was really I think a great creative outlet for all of us. Mm. There are a lot of personal experience being put into the. Uh... Yeah, to the whole experience. Yeah, into the game about <laughs> robots, uh, sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, but no, but uh, I think you, you played it. It feels personal. Like, yep. Uh, that's the, the quality of uh, doing something in a small team. 
you can make yeah. it very personal and yeah, just and each, the way you each like team member it. has like uh, their own uh, fingerprint on the project. Like you can Why be... um, did you guys choose VR? Uh, how, how did that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Were you guys uh, in VR already before that? Or yeah. Um, so basically, but maybe maybe we can to answer this. We need to go a bit back. A bit back. Okay. Take us back. Take us back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we always uh, loved uh, doing things and uh, creating things together. Um, in uh, high school and university, we didn't do things together. I learned uh, cinema and uh, screenwriting and uh, stuff animation and uh, computer science. And uh, then uh, when each one of us was trying to figure out what he was doing, a stuff came with uh, uh, what was it? The, the like. Uh, it was Oculus DK2, so the, DK. the, the second uh, generation developer kit before the wow. first mm. consumer product. Wow. That's yeah. a very long time ago, right? Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I brought it, uh, I, I bought one of these, and like uh, Al and I played with it, like with the early demos that were available. And it's like just, you know, that aha moment of like, oh, there's so much potential here as a creator, as a storyteller. Um, yeah, and I also we were just hooked. That that was uh, the first hook, and the second hook was when we started with small projects, uh, prototypes, uh, Saf's uh, school project or the like uh, graduation project. We saw how much engagement we can have with VR. Because we both did uh, things on the screen. I worked in the radio, uh, television, but VR was something else. Yeah, it was really impactful. And to uh, lean on to your uh, engagement bit, I got a literal engagement out of VR because, uh, uh, my, yeah, the first project I did in VR even before uh, with Eyal was uh, proposing to uh, my girlfriend. Uh, oh really? Wow. Short animation in VR that was a proposal. Oh, that's so cool. So that's <laughs> that's how we we learned about VR engagement. Well, yeah. did she eventually say yes and become your wife? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Congrats. <laughs> but, yeah. And, and, I mean, that's how you know a medium is uh, so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> now it's approved. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But, but back to the projects that we did that uh, you know eventually mm. became became Peanut Button. It was like just, you know, um, experiments with storytelling in VR and, and, you know, designing interactions with virtual characters. Um, and we did a lot of these. Some of them went to like festivals and shows and, oh, wow. and com competitions. And then we did like a location based uh, project in, in cinemas around Israel. Um, but then, you know, at, at a certain point, it felt like. Uh, you know, the next natural step for us was to uh, work with the newly released Oculus Quest. Uh, like that's when we made the shift from like small uh, things for festivals and, and ourselves and experiments to, to doing something for the, you know, for, yeah, the for current... consumers. Because like that's the first time we felt there was something that people could actually buy for their homes. Uh, yeah, the Quest was a big shift before that even it was a question if vr is going to be something used at yeah. home or uh at location based places mm -hmm. and arcades yeah. like it wasn't that clear where where it's going is it going to be a more gaming or more uh cinema uh, oriented and the quest really the the shift it took some time but because we were on the field, uh, engaging with gamers, we saw we, we saw, saw the potential. Like the yeah, first uh, new people uh, coming into it. The first time we unboxed the first Quest One, we we uh, uh, immediately understood that this is a game changer. That not only that you don't need a specialized gaming PC. Like a lot of people that we talked with beforehand who had VR at homes, or like I had a VR at home, but they had to have a dedicated room, right? Um, uh -huh. And so imagine how small is the percentage of the population that can afford an extra room where they put the light uh, the lighthouses and sensors and their you know computer and everything um and all of a sudden you have this you know this new device that you can you know like p 
people in like uh, roommates apartments can just you know take it out of their uh backpack and just you know sit on their sofa and just play and then put it back yeah um, yeah that's really really you said that this this is something we need to do yeah um, <laughs> and then the, the, it was immediate to say it but to do it took a like took a, a while yeah 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 from the moment we yeah. said we're gonna do a point and click game it took two years oh, wow mm. yeah Wow. But I, how was this how was how did you come up with like the point and click games? Was this something that you were influenced by that you always loved uh, yeah before we, like to do grew, that like we grew up on these on the uh-huh. classic uh, Lucas Arts games yeah, yeah, yeah and some others uh, Neverhood I think is a good mention mm-hmm. here Brain Fandango by Lucas Arts, Monkey Island of course. That's like that's that was like for us the highest form of entertainment and, wow yeah you know it's stories that really impacted us the same ways the same way a film did impact us or comic books or, or just, yeah growing up we really didn't tell the difference yeah them. it yeah. was all just just one continuum of, of stuff that we liked to geek out about yeah Even, so yeah We, we really see our mission or our vision is taking this genre one step ahead and not only um, continuing the tradition but also using VR to, to give it new life and new ways of uh, doing it. We really believe in uh, we can get it to, to more audience that way young people but also Maybe people who don't know about uh, point and click adventures and can uh... yeah for, for us the yeah. dream is that a new generation now can grow up on these type of games uh, yeah. the same way we we grew up on 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 the classics yeah that's pretty cool actually because that that it 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 seems like as if it's a form that's really gone out of fashion right like it it's after the three d games showed up like I still remember even before uh Yeah, I had like this um, VCD, like before DVD, there's like a VCD player. And then mm-hmm. you also had like a point and click game on there. Like it was so addictive and it was like you, you, you got transformed in this, in this universe all suddenly. And it was so cool that you can interact with something. And uh, wh- which was weird because it's just a television screen. And I know that before that there were also game consoles that were there that you could just <laughs> put something in it. And the graphics were a little bit better then with the point and click to their images instead of like these uh, 8-bit graphics, uh, right. which would really suck you in. So th- I didn't even notice that when uh, when I download the experience, I, I didn't even expect it to be a point and click because there's so many VR experiences right now. And when I was in it, it was like, after a while, I started to realize like, wait a minute this is really cool because it's a blend between uh, and uh, like um, a storytelling and um, uh, like the point and click like there's, there's a perfect blend between game and and storytelling so it is really uh, cool to see yeah yeah I mean I, I don't know how how many of the current VR audience even is familiar with the term point and click but yeah but but for us it's just a A way to to facilitate a really captivating story that you can just step into and feel like you're the hero of it like that's that's something that's really important to us that a lot of VR experiences out there have like you know the main story happening outside of you you're not experiencing yeah. it first person but you were witnessing it either I mean like mi- small miniatures or or mm. a voiceover of something interesting happening happening elsewhere or you're a uh, spectator yeah. um, and we're not saying what we're doing is the only way to do it but it's the most fun and efficient way that we we found to to do it in a in a cool way in a way that you really feel like you have challenges and you're the hero of a story like you're the detective you're the detective in a yeah you are a noir film like yeah. where what other yeah. other ja- genre could pull that eye off believably <laughs> yeah I think you Yeah, we are like, you want to be uh, Sherlock Holmes. You don't want to be mm-hmm. Watson watching Sherlock Holmes solving the problems. And too many VR games are about watching other characters doing things and being the imaginary friend, which can be cute and uh, very wholesome. It's, it has great potential, but we see the... 
amazing potential of VR storytelling in letting you be a character within the plot, mm-hmm. being the hero of the plot, moving the plot forward, uh, making the choices. Yeah, because eventually VR can just you know, be empowering. Like if I move the plot forward, then, then, then you know, that's the fullest experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, um, yeah, so you guys started Peanut uh, Button. Uh, where did that name come from? Uh, curious about that. <laughs> just, uh, well, uh, just brainstorming. Uh, just, yeah, uh, we <laughs> had a lot of names uh, up on, uh, on a board. It was even before, <laughs> uh, before we started working at the bomb shop that we were in another office for a short time. We had a lot of names on the board, like, brainstorming and then we said peanut button and we said okay peanut button and all other <laughs> things were, uh, we erased them yeah it just sounded uh, kind of playful i guess yeah, yeah. we like the name because it's a button yeah, nice. okay you have buttons yeah. in game i don't know peanut butter is the sandwich i like yeah we <laughs> really yeah. Like, we don't yeah, have a well, corporate and then, like we didn't <laughs> have a branding uh, research yeah which I I like the name. You're just having fun, right? And that's uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. the most important thing. Uh, <laughs> Any, anyway, and I love the name. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I was thinking about peanut butter a lot too, guys. So it's, it's yeah, okay. everybody so, likes peanut butter. <laughs> you must be inspired by. <laughs> and um, is it um, yeah? Because you're two brothers. Um, um, yeah, you've you've built this whole experience uh, together. Like how how was that? Like uh, working together on this, and um, you know. Um, uh, I'm not sure if, if one of you can program actually, um, 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 you know, like um, I can imagine there's multiple roles in, in, in the company. Um, um, yeah, you studied data, data scientist. Is that something like programming that you have done or what? How did that I, look I, like? I what, what studied the the computer science. Yeah. Computer science. So, yeah. Ah, computer science. So, yeah, I, I'm the programmer. Um, okay. And Eyal is more the creative director and he also managed a lot of the sound aspects of things, although we also worked with uh, an amazing team of friends who came along to help us. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, first w- of- working together as brothers, I think, is, is, is good for us. It's something very natural to us. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's ideal. Like, yeah, it's better than anything else we can think of, mm-hmm. uh, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I can tell that. Although I'm not uh, the programmer, uh, in the process of making the game, I learned a lot of Unity, mm. like getting mm. into the engine. And I think that it really affected the way all the creative thinking of the game. And uh, yeah. uh, I thought knowing really good how the game operates within the game engine helped me uh, write better uh yeah. story uh get more creative get more creative and For also knowing how it works like it's yeah. not like i wrote a script and uh, told asaf uh, go do it we did it together yeah. like asaf could yeah. do the i don't know the complex heavy lifting of actually building uh uh, the commands we use in our system of uh, point-and-click games. Yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. maybe it's worth uh, mentioning that uh, there, there was a, or there is a process that we use where you don't need to know how to program in order to make Retropolis-type levels, right? Oh, mm. cool. uh, interesting. So we have, uh, on top of Unity, we have like a drag-and-drop interface where Eyal or, or anyone in the team can just, you know, um, uh, create uh, point-and-click puzzles. And did oh, wow. you build that yourself? Or yeah. You, uh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. You can so, expand so from was, there easier yeah, so, as well. Sorry for interrupting, but that's what Eyal yeah. meant when he said that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's using commands or something like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I yeah. used uh, the commands and stuff, made the possibility to build levels, and then yeah. I learned, he taught me the system because he made it. He was the only one who can teach it. So I learned that. And then so quickly I could try all kinds of things and levels uh, inside the game. So I think uh, knowing 
especially like, not writing uh, some uh, abstract story, but actually knowing each click and each uh, thing the player does, how can it affect and how it will get uh, feedback. Will it be animation, mm. uh, sound, both the animation and sound, uh, vibrating of the, the controllers? Like, I know yeah. all the tools in the arsenal, so... Uh, so I really think that uh, also creative people really need to uh, pull their sleeves and uh, get into the uh, know all side of the systems. Yeah, because I can imagine there are a lot of limitations as well, right? Especially when you're on a standalone headset. In terms a of lot of or... limitations. Yeah. yeah, and also doing like choosing the point and click uh, may laugh for a lot of limitations on uh, what we can do, but. I think limitations are great for yeah. especially yeah. for a small studio, but even in general, when you're doing something creative, you need you need constraints and limitations because that's where you can really put your creativity to to the to work. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, and specifically with as you said with standalone, but uh, that also worked with our uh, asset creation pipeline, which is. Uh, so there's a quill, if you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we use a, a pipeline where we import a quill files into Unity engine and then mm -hmm. render them in Unity similarly to how quills, a quill uh, renders them, which is very, very lightweight rendering. Uh, so and in quill, uh, you use quill to uh, draw everything, so to do all yeah, of the so modeling everything, for every, everything every in the game is hand drawn. Oh, yeah. wow. Well. So everything's wow. hand drawn in Quill, and then export it, uh, import it into Unity, and from there the, into the point and click system, and then the stories elements are are, are added, right? Wow! Yeah, you got that's it. Cool. That's the recipe. Yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, With how many people plus, did plus you draw? a lot of iterations because because you do yeah. what you said, you do that once, and then you bring in people to play test, and then yeah. you see all your blind spots of where the story didn't work, where the art uh, mm. isn't there yet, yeah. where the music isn't right. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, did did you guys do a lot of these play tests that you that you created? Yeah, a lot of play, yes, so, a lot of them. Yeah. So to connect to what they all said before, it's not that he finishes a screenplay and then sends it off and and that's his job. We we do a play test like every in the earlier versions uh, of Metropolis every two weeks even, oh, wow. um, where we we really rush and make everything quick and dirty and you know not not fancy animations but just ah yeah. Very, so to very see if the story sketches. works. And then, yeah, the story kind of evolved as we were learning what what was working. And because I think something that um, was there the whole way from the beginning was like the feel and the genre we were aiming at. But other than that, so much changed. Like it's mm. it's hard to even imagine like what the first drafts of the story looked like. <laughs> Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. how much work was it from the first one till the last one? Is it like a very long time? Is it like fifty percent of the entire project, or is it even more than that? More, I, I would say. I would say two hundred percent. Wow. Because, because, wow. because, yeah. like, you throw a hundred percent more than one time. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, but then the third time you do it, you you get so much better at it. Yeah. You have so much so much learning from from before. There's no other way to do it mm -hmm. Mm. for us. Like, uh, but but I think the the trickiest part and the hardest part for anyone is to make that bad first uh, draft or bad mm. first bad or two like really bad iterations that you know that they, it's gonna suck. Like you mm. don't give it mm. enough time. There's no polish. There's no actors. We do the voices of all the characters, the art. Uh, the art is bad. The writing is bad. Everything is bad. <laughs> and, and, then, and then you're asking yourself, why, why are we making it? Everything <laughs> about this is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really and, hard. And, and, and it's, hard, it's hard as a creator because you aspire to do something that's, you know, you have like uh, your taste and you're, uh, uh, you're very critical about other things you see. Uh, and, and it's hard. Um, yeah. But it's, it's really, it's, it's the only way. It's the only way, like every every serious project 
that you really hear about, like its creation, it goes through that phase. And do you also show it to other people already then? Like that you, that you dance have, yeah, if you want to show have, it yeah. to? Because, yes, you, you have to because... Um, so, for example, if you're developing a, a, an animated film, you have storyboards and, and you show it to yeah. people. But, but with games, it's even more, more important because you need to kind of, together with the story and everything, you have the puzzle design. You want the puzzles to be understandable, not too hard, not too easy. And so yeah. the only way to, to know if a puzzle or what the difficulty level is of a puzzle is to bring other people because you already know this, mm. you invented it. Yeah. That was a question I had indeed, because the puzzle were like, uh, it's, it's literally in a place where you're like, you're doing it, you're about to get frustrated, and then you find the answer. <laughs> Sometimes you get a little frustrated, yeah, we, and then you find the answer. You're like, I cannot, uh, no, no, there's no solution. And like, ah, <laughs> I was there all the time. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's really, really oh, great. To, yeah, it's, it's great to hear that you say that, because that was exactly where we aimed at. Um, mm. And I think that's, that's difficult. I think <laughs> it's yeah. It takes a lot of a lot of refinement. And okay, let's make this ten percent easier, ten percent harder. Let's put mm. a hint right here. What? And then if you closely watch, like people who play this, you see where they're looking at at the game, where they're frustrated, mm. frustrated, right? And then okay, let's put a hint there because everybody's looking there when they're frustrated. Yeah. And if something is too easy. Okay, let's uh, take a hint out and uh, say yeah. something that is put a red herring and something that is uh, yeah. distracting because it's too easy. It's also it's <laughs> not good for for this to be too easy because you need that you need people yeah. to to have that moment of uh, I don't know what to do in order to feel oh I, I solved it myself I'm so I'm so uh, smart. If if yeah. it's not difficult if they felt like it was too easy. They don't feel it. Yeah. And I would say, uh, if you know all the inspire uh, the inspiration we take from uh, classic point and click games, that's a place where we kind of try to do things differently because with point and click games from the eighties and nineties, the difficulty level was such that you could, um, you know, go around the environments uh, hours and hours and not know how to progress. Um, and that was good, good uh, design practice then, because the, just the amount of games people owned was so yeah. much less. And so, if you got a game for the holiday, that was that was as a kid, that was the game that you had for like the four a uh, month following, right? Yeah. So if you finished it yeah. really fast, then you had nothing to play. Um, yeah, Ron. Uh, I think I heard Ron Gilbert, who made the uh, Monkey Island, say said in one interview that he loved uh, doing games and puzzles that people uh, thought about in their showers or uh, in on the, the bus. bus. Yeah. yeah, and then said, oh, yeah. I know the solution well, while not playing. But uh, also in the culture of uh, digital culture of having so much content uh, and also in VR, yeah. we're not aiming for that. Because in VR, we, we don't want to make it too hard to, to keep immersion. Yeah, we don't want to break immersion. Yeah, I think immersion is is uh, is something that you get by having the right amount of difficulty. You need to have that uh, difficulty level of a uh, player feeling like, okay, I'm looking for it, not bored yet, not too easy. Like not boring, like it's too hard. It's boring if it's too hard, and it's boring if it's too difficult. It's like a flow state, like uh, yeah. the concept of having a flow state. Uh, you you need to have the right amount of challenge. Immersion and flow state are really connected, if not the same. How thing. long? Um, how long did it take in total for you guys to build this whole experience um, from beginning till uh, from ID to so, so from say? from. Uh, the earliest, uh, earliest, earliest, earliest prototype we have made, and that was just the two of us, about two years. Okay, no, no wow. two years. Yeah. yeah, but then you know, the kind of the the more we went into it, the more serious it got, right? Yeah, ah, yeah. So you didn't uh, uh, put full time into it in the beginning, but afterwards you guys in went the beginning full -time? it was just us full time. 
Ah, it was full time already. You guys yeah, uh, yeah, went full time into it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then you know, it, I, I meant serious by meaning that the commitment or long term commitment. Because look, at the beginning we were full time, but we didn't have like a timetable of it's going to take to two years, for example. Yeah. We we started with like prototypes week by week. Um, mm. And then, as things uh, started to mature with the project, we understood kind of what the scope of the thing is. Yeah, and now uh, people online say, like, say it's uh, it's too short. Yeah, that's the main <laughs> the main. <laughs> it took it. Uh, yeah, it was so hard to, to do it, and now people really want more. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a good time at the same time, right? <laughs> It's yeah, why, why should someone care uh, how hard it was uh, to make? <laughs> yeah. They just want to have uh, more uh, Retropolis. So, uh... but it's also crazy that when I uh, looked at it, like Kevin said as well, in the beginning, you you, you notice when you, when you uh, get like a uh, a VR experience, that most of the time when you see things done really well, then it's like a professional company doing it, a professional studio. So in the end, when I saw like, this, this is three guys doing it, that was the point where like, okay, this this isn't like a normal thing to do. Um, <laughs> and from my perspective, like in the end, when you see like the end credits, which I think is really uh, well done, like the, uh, you call it uh, called extras, I think. Like at mm -hmm. the end of the yeah. game, you also yeah, have like yeah, these yeah. extras there. Uh, and you can see all the soundtracks and all of the the assets that were there, and yeah, then the you can see the mess. Yeah, yeah. The concept, then see, you see the massive amount of work that goes into something like this. And yeah, from our perspective, we um, yeah, our storyteller is trying to come up with all of these things as well. Then you notice like how difficult already is to tell a simple short story is already difficult uh, that you can follow and that has like a certain vibe to it mm. uh, and, and create like that consistency into it uh, uh, but I, with yeah. all of these elements all of these things like it's so complicated really fast so um yeah it's amazing yeah, that, i would that, say that, that the so most uh, difficult thing is to make a simple story yeah yeah because mm. in the beginning like the first bad draft is not simple it's very complicated and like things are connected very very complicatedly it like and then part of the process is you know understanding what stays and what and it what doesn't work out. here and needs to live until in when, the end um... it feels like simple and coherent and yeah and, and natural like that's that's how it should be yeah and also i think that in vr doing it seem like doing it really simple is where vr is is really the the right way mm -hmm. Because when you watch TV, or you, you've seen so many TV shows, so you need the, you need it to be self-aware all the time, and you need to have so many references, and you need it to be uh, like something that has so many layers. And uh, in VR, it's so unique to experience a story when you're inside of it. That you don't yeah. like doing it the classic way, doing it the simple way, doing it with real emotions. I think yeah. it's it's not just enough. It's it's the best thing. Like yeah, there's also not like a, 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 a lot of examples, right? It's it's not a lot of examples yet, uh, as as with movies and and etc. This is also like um, yeah, really uh, discovering a new way as well of of using these 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 tools and technologies that you have. Before you mentioned um, draft, I was cur I was curious about like when you say draft, um, did you guys plan the whole thing out uh, outside of VR and then started building it in VR like storyboards? Like how does that look like? Uh, what, yeah, what's no, the process? So, so we we have some planning outside. Like okay, before uh, before recording lines, it will be like in a uh, in a Word or in a Google Doc. Uh, and before building a puzzle, we have like a small design document for it. Um, but these are these are just like uh, these don't survive much as documents because we really really fast create them, play test them, and then do the whole thing again. Hmm. Yeah, because right. like the, so when I say draft, I, I basically mean a playable game. That's yeah, okay. a version, oh, a, ver a version, a version of the game. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's uh, yeah, but it's a version that uh, potentially or. The earlier versions potentially 
ninety percent of it will go to the to, to waste. <laughs> I think that in the early drafts, in the early versions, like of, of the game, we someone uh, played it and said uh, the jokes aren't funny, and we were <laughs> yes, it's it's a, such a good uh, feedback. Why? Yeah, because few uh versions before that when we really tried <laughs> out different ways of doing story in VR we asked how was the jokes and the player said what jokes like <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't get the the idea of how to tell a story and when mm. to see the line within the interaction so the people will hear it because you have a VR headset on your head you have a So you can look at anywhere you don't know who's talking to you if it's not done correctly. Mm-hmm. You can interact with things. You always ask yourself, okay, what am I doing? Uh, most of the players ask, ask themselves, am I doing it correctly? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should do it like this. Maybe I should do it like that. And they don't listen when they do it. You need to give them the confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're doing just fine. And then maybe... Now maybe you can hear a line of dialogue. Yeah. And then if the joke uh, yeah. is not funny, great, we'll write something else. Writing mm-hmm. the jokes is the, the fun part, and it's, it's very fast. Doing the game is the, the hard work. Doing the game and, and, and finding how... Figuring out how to even make a platform on which you can tell jokes, right? What is yeah. the structure of this uh, story in VR? That's, that's, that's that took us a long time to figure out yeah you don't even realize that when you're playing it like those yeah, are all of these true. things that that you don't yeah, realize. Yeah, like and uh, yeah the, the jokes all hit it like uh, because uh, there are so many uh, fun elements that w- which makes it a little bit lighter uh, in there especially like the 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 jokes that are that are there towards like that you're really a robot actually <laughs> and in a robot yeah. world because yeah. even if you are you forget that sometimes you're just this character and then the jokes remind you again and that that's actually quite funny yeah Yeah. I think this is a really good job. But on a certain level, the robots there aren't really... You don't really think that much about that. They're robots. Like, they uh, say it, mm-hmm. but like they do everything they can to, to imagine they're human. Wow, that, that's the, mm-hmm. the amazing thing in VR. Like, people accept the, the suspension of disbelief in VR is amazing. Like, you, you mm-hmm. don't need to, to show too much the robots. People, like, buy it. immediately anything you show them they'll buy it it's 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 very was fun. it was a different a different than what you expected like that there are different things that that you thought would be very difficult to to do actually but were very easy as well like what you said like the dispense of disbelief that's a good question i think that the, yeah the the selling the the illusion is very easy we are selling the illusion Like it's it's hard to me to say but it's a, it's a professional talk so we, I hope uh, no no one will be disappointed we didn't mm. build the whole city like mm. it's just like because but we gave the illusion there's a huge mm. city a huge okay. world mm-hmm. but we, yeah. we only build the scenes of the game where there's a story yeah. and to mm-hmm. it we are when you, when you're inside the city you Uh, even though it's hand drawn and it's not photorealistic at all, it's very stylized. The illusion works so good. It's, uh, this is something that we they could, we need to to put our mind on making it uh, uh, convincing to, to not uh, have anything that is that has put you out of it, but You just have a window and you have the view and you buy, and you have the right sound to go with it and people will buy the fact that there's a whole sci-fi city out there and they want to explore it and say the game is too short <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah but, but, but uh, the, the, there's other retropolis things coming up we can mm. say we, we know it's too short. Uh, we, we, we also think like that, but mm-hmm. we, we needed to, 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 to do it. We need to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What like are you guys working on? Do something and put it out there. We didn't know if people would want to play it before it was out. Like the, the we got good play tests, like reviews yeah. and good feedbacks, but, uh, 
You don't know what will it be when you release it to the world. Yeah, you don't know. It doesn't matter how much you play this the game, launching something is different. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. something else. Like actually putting it out there to the public, that's, that's something else. Yeah. Really Having people pay, uh, pay money yeah. to, to yeah. play it and not doing you a favor mm-hmm. for that. Yeah. It's, it's very different. Yeah, because what's what, um, are, are there things ahead, like yeah. behind the scenes um, that we don't see? But but I can imagine there's a lot of work going on. Like that, you guys, what you mentioned that people have like certain reviews that you have to comment on all of these reviews. Uh, are you guys doing that yourself, or is there what what are the things that you don't see as uh, uh, on I the outside? One, no? I I think we didn't answer to a lot of reviews, which I don't know if it's good practice or not. Probably Mm. more experienced uh, studios know better than us. But we (laughs) answered to two uh, bad reviews, I think. And one was personally me and one was personally Hayao. Mm. Yeah, we we don't... It's uh, it's part of maintenance. It's like, yeah, we're we're happy to do it. It's not uh, like a burden or something. Uh. Yeah, okay. I can imagine that there's so many more jobs involved. Like if you release it under the platform that the whole world opens yeah. up suddenly, right? Yeah, just it's uh, also marketing or something else. That, that... Yeah. yeah, marketing, QA, optimization, like uh, mm-hmm. when the game moved from uh, App Lab to the main Oculus, or the main Quest store, um, mm-hmm. we had a very, very intense uh, couple of weeks where we had to make sure that the frame rate doesn't drop from 72 at any part of the game. Oh, wow. So th- that means did. you have to go back it into did. the game and and optimize things? or We had to go back into the game and optimize uh, quite mm. a lot. And we had a time frame because that's the schedule the, uh, the meta gave us to, okay, that's you need to fix everything by this point and then it's released and if if we test it after that point and it's not fixed yet then you get a different release date right yeah. you need to try over again at some other time um and so that that was pretty hectic um it was like we all wore a lot of hats yeah uh, Eyal had a physical hat that when he wore, uh, he was in marketing mode. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if he came over to talk with me, I knew if he had the hat on, it was about marketing. <laughs> yeah, because uh, because uh, as a, as an artist, you you only want to to make the most beautiful and pure piece of art, and you don't say it's just a game. You always think what it means and how it can be better. But when you go to market this game and we self-published the game, we did everything ourselves, you need to have a different perspective. And it was, <laughs> it uh, took some mental work to have this uh, bipolar personality <laughs> where when you market <laughs> it, you, you need to you really need to think about someone who, someone on, online, you have his attention for a fraction of a second, and what do you say to make him uh, see the trailer? And then the trailer need to be uh, very flashy, and you can't uh, the the trailer can't uh, reflect all the aspects of the game, and probably not the aspects you love the most as an artist. Mm. Because as, as mm. an artist, you love the everything that is very nuanced. Nuanced, the film noir uh, nods, you know, the, the point and click nods. That's something that yeah, for even, us is is important, but it, it's not uh, it's not the biggest selling point of the yeah. game. Mm. So uh, yeah, buy a hat if you if you're market your own thing. <laughs> this is the marketing hat. You have a recommendation on a specific hats to buy. Uh, it's very. It needs to be a douche baggy hat. Like uh, it was some kind of a cheap fedora. <laughs> fedora. <laughs> it's it's. <laughs> That's awesome. 
I don't know if you uh, spoke about this before. I was curious still. Uh, I got cut off for a second on my internet. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but how much time did you spend in uh, Quill? I was curious about that. Mm, yeah, because in Quill we, we you build everything. That, uh, ah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah or not. Uh, yeah, so Quill was, uh, it's part of our daily work. Still is after after yeah. Metropolis 1 for what we're working on now. Um, it's recommended not to do it for a too long because because you need some rest for your eyes um yeah. but yeah if, if, if you know it's some um, it's a work environment for for every uh, for every purpose yeah yeah it's so interesting because it's so and uh, yeah like a new uh thing uh, last time in our conversation we spoke about it as well like quill like you're literally in vr the whole time like mm -hmm. drawing there right um and there's not so many use cases yet over the whole world. Uh, like now, yeah, especially what you mentioned before as well with Quest. Quest was really the first, I think, uh, mainstream VR. Uh, so now we're starting to discover all of these things, right? Like what happens if we're in there for weeks, months, years? Like, we, yeah, you know, <laughs> a, yeah it's, it's a very interesting uh, yeah, process uh, yeah, to be in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally. And I think um, it also has a good impact on how, you know, the art, you, you make it and you're there present with it as you make it. Yeah. Um, and you, you oh, that's see super it cool. set, almost the same way as the player of the game sees it eventually. Yeah, yeah and also think... utilizing the the vr uh, opportunity because uh, using quill i think is the was one of the biggest things that enabled us to to do this uh, production if we tried to make it the the, uh, the 3d assets and animations in the other other pipelines i i don't think we'd be able to finish the game yeah it was uh, doing it in quill was very uh, efficient mm -hmm. definitely mm. like um you can see the stuff that's made on on quill uh, theater or now it's called a uh, um tv tv i think on the quest the tv application yeah like i saw like, like an animation player or something the animation player exactly yeah. so there's like short stunning series there that are usually made by either a single artist or a team of small artists um and it's really a showcase as to how how efficient Quill is in in bringing like a visual uh, uh, wait a minute I forgot the word what do you want to say Hazon vision yeah okay again uh, so if you, yeah. it, it's a showcase of like uh, how to bring your visual vision to life with like life, yeah. the fraction of resources you would need uh, with like a 3D uh, traditional studio. Yeah, that's so cool actually, especially in the terms of storytelling that it's that it gives like an opportunity for people to tell stories in a different way because normally even if you go back towards the uh, what you mentioned before like filming or then you have to have like all of these sets characters or like actors of these things to tell the story and it's like a lot of work to get all of these things together and, and there's also like a limit in creation right like the, the the creative input you can um that you can have on creating something especially with a low budget and mm -hmm. now with with these tools in vr it's also in vr which is amazing like that you're actually in there but also the whole ability that you can actually create an animation like this uh, which is like as an indiv individual developer is pretty amazing actually that that it will change a lot right like so when i saw the example of you guys that you could bring this story to life um yeah, yeah what, what do you guys think that will, will it will do like in the in the near future or that's or new that's new that the small studio can do something like that um i mean it's another step in a longer process where you know you have uh commercially available game engines like unity and unreal mm. that the made it possible for indie studios to make indie games for PC, right? That was something new 10 years ago. Um, but then I think using Quill uh, and the type of tools we're using now uh, op opens new opportunities for, for small teams. 
to make something that is yeah. truly remarkable and, and... Mm. Yeah, in the past yeah. you had uh, good excuses for <laughs> not doing uh, <laughs> your creative things but now with no, uh, you with, in. <laughs> Unity, with uh... there's so many other tools out there by the way like we yeah Qu Qu quill is a, is a great is a great 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 tool for us uh, I don't know if it's the right fit for every single project ever uh, right because mm. it gives the cartoony feel uh, which we love um, but there are so many so many different new techniques out there now that um, makes it possible to create before so easily like uh, before you I'm really excited with uh, where the AI image generation uh, mm. generation mm. thing will will take us like in a couple of years and what that will allow creators to do yeah are you using it already now for 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 something not yet not yet not yet but we, I I'm, I'm excited about it and I'm playing with it and yeah, but are you a future project? Also, us. before having Quill, we had prototypes of Retropolis using uh, <laughs> uh, cutouts. Yeah, like, like 2D planes uh, in, around you. Yeah, and cubes. In It looked bad, but we could achieve really good feedbacks only using mm. the cutouts and 2D planes. Yeah, that and, was more than enough for us to do meaningful testing there and, and yeah. really understand yeah, and if, if, if we Quill took the story in the right direction or not. Yeah, if Quill didn't uh, like uh, happen to us, yeah. I think we we could have uh, made uh, it <laughs> look good and do something that is more uh, quick and dirty. Like uh, it, uh, it also affects the, the type of the game you make, the aesthetics. Yeah, we all we we. we, we... Almost, it, it was almost like a South Park aesthetic to it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They also use cutouts, and they also use cutouts. Yeah, yeah. One day we'll do the cutout game. It <laughs> will be, it will be a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> cutout game. Yeah. No, so, but it's a very good technique. Unless, actually, unless to test someone it out. Did it before before us, because it's really easy to make, and, and I don't know why why we haven't seen the the cutout game out yet, because mm -hmm. we have all kinds of prototypes that we see coming out, things that are really, really similar to ideas and prototypes we made, and, but maybe one day we'll make it. And then, and then we we open the, the, the Twitter and see, oh, someone, someone just made a, a full feature uh, along the lines of a prototype we made, like with, uh, with you know, the Oculus uh, CV1 or something. Yeah. But, uh, but we're we're yeah, happy. The, it makes yeah, yeah. us happy because then we get to play it and enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. What What are your thoughts about the? Um, yeah, the, you mentioned AI uh, creating that. Isn't that a fear as well as an artist? I'm curious because I know a lot of uh, yeah, artists usually talk about no, they're going to replace us. What I really thoughts? relate to the fear on one level. Um, like I think we we like it's understandable. Uh, hmm. But eventually, I think it's just it's just uh, another tool in your tool set. Maybe a very powerful tool, but but a tool nonetheless. It will change stuff. But uh, but I think a change will always happen, right? Yeah, change <laughs> will always happen. And I think if you are just curious and play with it early and like see what's going on, then then you'll just be able to use it for 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 your benefit like to 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 create stuff to make stuff to to bring value yeah yeah you can always put the hat on as a marketer <laughs> uh, yeah no i i think also as an artist it, it it's a great tool uh, yeah definitely i, I mean it's 100%. it's early it's early to tell where where it will go but yeah. already i see like uh uh, our artist friends using it and for example you can like take a picture and then you know draw a, you know a picture and then expand it so you don't mm -hmm. need yeah so you kind of define the style by your drawing and then you know have a background of an animation and then the ai makes it you know a much bigger background um yeah. and so you know that artist that found out that technique now can just do stuff much more efficiently. 
One uh, one thing I'm curious about is, um, yeah, and I'm um, up to you how much you want to share about it, but to know that, yeah, a lot of uh, our goals is, is to reach other artists, other studios, people that are working on a budget, people that, um, you know, have, have more money to, to spend. Like, how do you guys see this financial uh, game? Because, yeah, you've, you've done this full time for a while already. So I'm curious, like, um, yeah, um, um, are you guys already able to create an income? Uh, you're selling the game, right? So, um, yeah. is, is that enough to fund fund the next things? Like, how, how do you see that? Uh, yeah, that picture. Yeah. So uh, we're selling it, and it's it's you know a real a real delight that you're able to to that there's revenue from something you've created in the world. Yeah. Um, it's not yet in a point where it can fully fund our next project. Um, and so we're, we're self-investing in it, um, uh, which is, uh, not something everyone can do, but, uh, and so we're, we're privileged here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like, we, we try to do everything very, very efficient, right? Working from the bomb shelter, working a small team, etc. Um, but we really believe in it, like uh, also on the financial level as well, like, it's yeah. it's such a powerful experience, um, just you know, experiencing a real story, an emotional story in VR, that we know, you know, it's it's something people will want. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for sharing, guys. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, sharing and coming on and yeah, yeah but sharing also, your story. Also, our fun. next project is is a bigger one. Like we, we oh, want yeah. To, yeah, I'm curious yeah, about that. We, we've seen uh, so much potential, and we want to to get it uh, bigger, longer, give people what they want. Hmm. What's next? A, a, What's a longer next? experience? Uh, it's <laughs> not. It, we're <laughs> it very secret? close to. In, in, we're <laughs> really, really close well, to the point of sharing. Maybe we can okay. hint that uh, <laughs> it's it's going to continue the first of chocolates. Nice. Uh, we we awesome. that's a we, that's a very uh, fine delicate hint there. <laughs> it's a, it's a hint that really gives out the uh, everything. Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, I didn't say when, when it comes out. Yeah, 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 of course. But but it's a uh, yeah, it's a retropolis game. It's a longer retropolis game. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. It's, uh, we're working on it very hard, and we really we're pouring our hearts and souls into it. Yeah. We really, really hope uh, <laughs> well, people will like it. We love it. We we really we're surprised about like how good it's coming out, and we hope other people think the same. Right, it's it's incredible to see that that uh, it's such a different way because the, with the Oculus, what I said, like there, you've got Marvel on there, right? Like with the new Iron Man that's there, and then there are like indie developers as well, and I think that. <laughs> That's that's just something completely new as well. Like when the technology first emerges, that there's actually an ability for that you guys are also there, and like the big studios haven't overcome all of these things yet. And I think yeah. it's beautiful for me actually when I played it today. You can really feel the yeah the soul, the heart, the passion that you guys put into it. And I think that that's yeah, I really appreciate the work that you've done, like Thank to create you. this and yeah. To Thank create you. such an amazing yeah, experience. I think that, that's, yeah. It's an amazing opportunity and I think it's here for a while because VR is so different from any other type of medium that I think that it's even a, an advantage to be small and not to like not to have too much worries about a huge team that you need to so you need to play it safe if you or if you have a, an IP that is already existing, you, yeah. you need to. I don't know. So, you, ma so many uh, executives that define what can and cannot be done, and sometimes it just goes against what best works in VR. Yeah, so it's such an opportunity just to try out things and take risks and uh, see. What, where are you going? And the audience in VR is maybe the 
the best part of it because people who own VR, they just interested in seeing something new, something cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's a delight to, to have this audience. It's, it's like if, if you go into if if you go into I don't know a console or a PC gaming, the audience is very much in a in a niche. Everyone has their own genre that they love. In VR, not so much. People just want to see the yeah. cool thing out there. The so next level gaming. What's happening yeah. now? Just yeah. excite me. And and I think it's it's really great like that. You have this type of community that really really supports all different uh, types of new experiences and yeah we're we're yeah, good love that. Mm-hmm. and we're so early still right like the community still uh it's growing and uh yeah in a way yeah, yeah. Very you can early see still. it from from you to you it's it's different it's evolving it's growing uh, yes yeah. yeah, and, and really again thanks to to everyone who was listening who played it like this community makes it possible for us to do the crazy stuff we're doing. So, again, thanks. Keep it up. Where uh, can people find you guys? Uh, if if they're, uh, what's the best way to, yeah, uh, uh, learn more or, or what? Well, what are some search links that, uh, the secret on Metropolis on Google. We have uh, all kinds of social media. It's yeah, our, our link tree uh, leads to either twi- Twitter or if you want to talk to us on our Discord server. Yeah, if, if Where, wherever is most uh, convenient for you, for you yeah. to talk with us, we're there. We're there, and we we answer. You asked about uh, bad reviews, but also we answer to to people who write who write us. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I answer personally to to everyone who writes emails, and uh, uh, mostly it's good. People who love the game and want more. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, it's very easy to reach us. <laughs> like, yeah, search uh, The mm-hmm. Secret of Metropolis, uh, find Twitter or any social media, uh, Discord, uh, it's, uh, if anyone wants to chat. Yeah, we're here. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, well, for sure, make sure to include the links in the, yeah, in the description of the of the podcast. Definitely. Yeah, enjoyed the conversation. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you have uh, any last burning questions. And I also want to thank uh, thank the Do Brothers, uh, yeah, for coming on, sharing the story, and give us some insights in uh, yeah, how you've guys built this amazing experience. I can't uh, can't wait for people to hear this. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. It was much. a pleasure talking with you guys, and uh, thanks for all the good work you're doing. Build the space together. Exactly. Built, uh, exactly. Build the yeah. virtual reality just, community together. Yeah, bringing forth. You know, these experiences is, is super, super important.